Hi there, so in this video I wanted to take you through how to fix some of the issues you may be having with database mail inside SQL Server and then also being able to send email using the AlterX tool. So I'm, I'm really trying to kill two birds with one stone here, so to speak. Uh, I feel like a lot of us that work in data analytics and in that space uh, sort of are a, a jack of all trades, that we do multiple things sort of responsible for a broad range of data needs. So one one thing in particular that I ran into over this last week had to do with our database server, specifically our SQL server, not sending out database mail. And um, and it was a setup as a new server and I, I participated in some of the setups, so not the, not the complete thing. What I'm gonna do is walk you through the steps and then in the description of this video, you'll have a table of content. So you can skip ahead to the specific part that you think you're having problems with, although it may be helpful for you to watch the whole video for you to understand where the breakdown is with the settings inside SQL Server. So quickly, to, just to show you how you need to get this set up in SQL Server, uh, the very first thing is that you have to go into the management uh, section here on SQL Server and set up database mail. And so usually you'll configure database mail as your first choice. You'll leave it default to set up database mail. You'll get a message saying that database mail is not enabled. Do you want to enable it? You say yes. From here you have to give it a profile name. So I'm just going to call this um, default uh, email profile. And uh, of course, I could give it a description, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to leave that blank. And then we're going to add a a database uh, email uh, account to this. And um, I'm just going to call this uh, database database mail. Again, I can give it a description. Uh, I have to give it an email address that it's going to use to send email from. So this is this is what everybody's going to see as the email that they'll receive. So um, I'm going to just create a default account here that's just called uh, sender at uh, msn.com. <clears throat> fake email address, doesn't really exist. I can give it a name. Uh, it's up to the server on whether or not it's going to accept this name. Uh, usually it'll just use the name that's associated with the account uh, when it gets displayed in people's email. Uh, browsers and uh, Outlook, things like that. If we want it to uh, reply to a different email address, we can put it in there. And then we put uh, the name of the server where the email's actually going to go. Uh, if I'm using Outlook 365, there's uh, you can find online what the actual SMTP server is for that. I'm going to be using a relay, and part of this email is related to uh, or excuse me, part of this video is related to how AlterX is set up. And so I'm using a relay and I'm just going to call this relay.corp.com. Uh, it's just a generic server. It doesn't really exist, but it's that's the server name if I was going to use a relay that I would, that I would set up. The other important thing in, in here is that because it's a relay, I have set this up to use anonymous authentication, which is important for the AlterX piece I'm going to talk about here in a couple minutes. If you're setting this up to use as an Outlook relay or, or directly send email to, to uh, Office 365 or a different platform, then you would want to use the authentication that's correct for that platform. So we'll just hit OK, click Next. Uh, at this point, it's really not going to do any checking to make sure that this is valid because none of the stuff I entered was, was valid. Uh, it's just going to set it up and tell you that it worked. Okay, that's, that's part one. Part two then is I'm going to go down to the uh, into the SQL Server agent here. Make sure that this is enabled also that it's been started. There's a green icon there telling me it's been started. So make sure that's active. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is go down and set an operator. And in here we'll just do a new operator and I'm just going to put my name in there. And then we need to put our email address, my my personal email address, of course, I'm not going to put that in there, so we'll just call it uh, Nathan um, Fake Email uh, at msn.com, something like that. And then the pager can be a phone number, so I'm going to do this like they do in the movies. We'll do 6305555555 at 
whatever the pro carrier provider's text system is that lets you send emails to a to a SMS text. If it's Verizon, for example, they'll let you send it to uh, at vtext.com. That would work. Uh, and then you have to turn on the time frame in which the pager is active. Uh, in this case, the text system I'm going to use. That way you're not getting text in the middle of the night if you don't want to. Maybe you want to get it when it fails and wake up and fix it. That's fine. But uh, you have to set the time frames here. Um, and then click OK. You're good to go at that point. It'll create the operator. Again, it doesn't check to make sure that email address is valid. It's just going to create it. Okay, so we have the database mail set up. We have an operator set up. Uh, the next piece we need to do is look for a job that we want to add the the notification to. So I have a job down here that I'm going to go and move to notifications and say email, hit the drop down, choose Nathan when the job fails and page him also. Okay, as long as it fails within the time frame that I set for it to page me, then that will work. Click OK. Again, it'll set that up. Now, this is the point where I think everything's golden. It's going to work brilliant, no problems. I can even go into database mail, right click on it, and say send test email, and I'll receive the test email. But then the job fails, and I don't get an email. And that's typically because there's one other thing you have to do, and this is the step I almost always forget to do, which is to go to the SQL Server agent, right click on it, choose properties. And from the properties pop-up window, go to alert system and make sure you enable the mail profile. This is the one I just created a few minutes ago and the default email profile there and uh, click OK. Once you do that, then the alert system will stay active. It won't be shut off uh, at any time when the server is running. As long as the SQL Server agent is, is started, uh, then it'll work for you. So that's the that's the step that I've typically forgotten to do and why I receive default emails or um, test emails but don't receive the alerts when there's actually a notification for a failed job on the server. Okay, back to Alteryx now. So from the Alteryx piece, what we're going to do is I just created a simple uh, text box here and in the text box, all I have is a, an, a, a to address and a email report component here. And you'll notice in this, in this component, it doesn't have a setup here to do any authentication to an email server. And this is, this is sort of one of the downfalls of the tool, that it really is limited in where it can send an email. In fact, it can only send an email to a to a relay or to an email box that doesn't require authentication. So you can select auto detect, cross your fingers, hope it works, but it's probably not going to. And most of the companies I've worked for, we use Office 365 or Microsoft based product that requires authentication. So uh, I'm going to uncheck this and the relay that I have before that I had previously set up, just a generic name, it's a fake name. I invented it as relay.corp.com. In the description of, the, of this video, what I'm going to do is post a link to a website that tells you how to set up an email relay server. It'll be on your network, behind your firewall, and you're simply just going to set it up so it takes emails from, from this address and, and ships them or passes them along out to an external email system that'll then process it. If you're not going to do it yourself, you can just simply pass that link on to your IT folks and they should be able to set it up for you. Okay, so that's basically all you have to do within the email tool is make sure you set up that, that email relay. I have a field that's coming in here that has the address for it and the rest of the tool should work like it normally does. There's really nothing else you, ha you have to do. The most important thing is setting up that relay component. Okay, I'm going to stop it there and uh, let you have at it. So good luck with the tools. Please leave me comments if there's anything that was missed in the video or sounded bizarre to you that you want clarity on. And please subscribe to the channel as always so you don't miss any updates. Thanks.